Greetings fellow Planeswalkers, I'm James, welcome back to the Commander at Arms YouTube channel. This week on the YouTube channel we're going to be breaking down not a deck that we have built, but a deck from a friend of the Discord server. We've mentioned him many times on the podcast before, his name is Jared, he's been in a couple of our Play of the Weeks, and this is his Mono Black Rat Combo deck. It is the best time to talk about this deck because Neon Dynasty is just around the around the corner and we're going to be talking about a original Kamigawa Commander. So, but before we get into the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, as well as leaving a comment in the comment section below. Tell us what you think about the deck, uh, and with all that, let's jump into it, shall we? So we're going to be starting off this deck with the commander that is Marinar. He is three and two black for a two, three legendary creature, Rat Rogue, that says all rats have fear. Has an activated ability of tap, sacrifice a rat, put a X11 one, one black, uh, sorry, put X11 one, one black rat creature tokens into play where X is the number of rats you control. So again, you want to be basically getting a lot of rats on the field. Uh, we're going to start off this deck here by going through some of the enchantments. We have three enchantments in the deck. The one, first one is Grave Pact. It is one black, black, black for an enchantment. This is whenever a creature you control dies, each other player sacrifices a creature. This is a small amount of control in mono black. You're going to be having a lot of creatures on the field. So you're going to be, you know, just favorable attacking and then blocking. Uh, doesn't really matter if you have Marinara in the field, they're going to have uh, fear. So they're going to be unblockable, get the damage through. But if they decide to block and you don't have Marinara in the field, uh, you're going to be, you know, grave packing their, their creatures away. After that, we have Necropotence. This isn't the card we've talked about on the podcast before, but it is three black for an enchantment that says, skip your draw step. Whenever you discard a card, exile that card from your graveyard. Uh, has an activated ability of pay one life, exile the top card of your grave uh, of your library face down, put that card into your hand at the beginning of your next end step. This is just an easy way to use your life as a resource to draw a metric butt ton of cards. After this, we're going to get into the creature package here. So we have more than just rats. We have a Ayara, first of Lockthwain. She's three black for a two, three legendary creature, elf noble that says whenever Ayara, the first of Lockthwain or another the black creature enters battlefield under your control each opponent loses one life you gain a life you can also then tap sacrifice another black creature to draw a card you're gonna be turning rats into card draw also rats into drain i love it uh, after that we have crashing drawbridge this is a two mana artifact creature wall for a zero four defender tap creatures you control have haste until end of turn if you get this out before you get any other rats out you can tap it give them all haste start swinging out Easy way to get super amounts of damage in very, very, very quickly. I love this card. After that, we have Crypt Gas. This is three and a black for a 2-2 spirit with Extort, which basically says whenever you cast a spell, you may pay white or a black. If you do, each opponent loses one life and you gain that much life. Now, this works in this deck because it is mono black because the white pip is in the reminder text. So it doesn't actually count towards this card's color identity. Uh, it also says whenever, a, whenever you tap a swamp for mana, you add one additional black to your mana pool. Easy way to get, um, again, just a massive amount of black mana in this deck to cast more rats. After that, we have Piper of the Swarm. It is one and a black for a 1-3 creature with a human warlock that says rats you control have menace. You have this on the field with Mariner. You've also got menace and fear but you know that's just kind of overkill so one or the other you're going to get rat damage through it has two activated abilities the first one is one and a black to tap create a one one black rat creature token after that the other one is two two not not two two and two black for a tap sacrifice three rats gain control of target creature whatever creature your opponent has that you want you can get it with piper of the swarm and all the rats we are playing I believe 24 copies of Relentless Rats. This is one and two black for a 2-2 two, two rat. This is Relentless Rats get plus one, plus one for each other creature on the battlefield named Relentless Rats. A deck may have any number of cards named Relentless Rats. Hence why we're able to play, I believe, uh, yes, 24 copies of this card. This is the mainstay creature in this deck. You're going to be casting every single rat in your deck, hopefully by the end of the game. If not, you're going to have a lot of the rats. You can use these rats to, to uh, use, sorry, you can use uh, Marinara's ability to sack these rats to make two 1-1 one, one rats. So you're turning one rat into two rats and then two rats into four rats. And then you can kind of see how it's going from there. Whenever you're sacrificing a rat, you've got other things that come out. 
Um, I did also skip over an enchantment that I believe I just looked, I didn't look at before. So we're gonna go back to the enchantments here real quick. We have the Meat Hook Massacre. This is X black black for a legendary enchantment. It says when Meat Hook Massacre enters the battlefield, each creature gets minus X minus X till end of turn, where X is obviously what you paid into the mana cost. Uh, whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life. Whenever a creature in an opponent control dies, you gain a life. So with this works with Grave Pact, you gotta be uh, basically sacking your own creatures to making your opponents losing and gaining and you're, you're going to be gaining they're going to be losing straight aristocrats piece is a fantastic card from innistrad midnight hunt i love this card didn't get a copy of it in any of my packs that i opened super bummed about it but i will be picking up a copy hopefully in the you know near future for my own aristocrat style deck all right after we have the done the creatures and the enchantments let's go to the instant speed spells we have ad nauseum as our first one it is three and two black for an instant that reads reveal the top card of your library and put that card into your hand you may uh, you lose life equal to its converted mana cost or mana value now uh you may repeat th repeat this process any number of times this is basically going to draw you as many cards as you need Use your life as a mass resource. You're going to get it back later from other things in the deck. We're going to leave all that stuff till the end. After that, we have Baleful Mastery. This is a three and a black for an instant that says you may pay one and a black rather than pay this spell's mana cost. If the one and the black was paid, an opponent draws a card, you exile, target, creature, or planeswalker. That downside isn't that bad, especially when you want to get rid of something completely nutty off the board. Uh, maybe it will be. This is still just a four mana exile anything on the board. Get rid of those big old drazis, get rid of the combo pieces off it goes after that we have deadly dispute this is one in a black for an instant that says as an additional cost to cast this spell sacrifice an artifact or creature you draw two cards and create a treasure token this is huge this is a power crypt version of read the bones or sign in blood um and which i believe is also being played in this deck as well so we have after that deadly relic this came from the commander 19 sorry commander 20 um commander precon decks i guess so this is a uh, three and a black for an instant that says if you control a commander you may cast this spell without paying its mana cost and you exile target creature huge after that we have uh fatal push this is one black for an instant that says destroy target creature if it has converted mana cost two or less and has revolt destroy that creature if it has converted mana cost four or less instead if a permanent you controlled left the battlefield this turn again you're gonna be having things leave the battlefield all the time this is a one mana kill something with four cmc or less after that we have force of despair this is one and two black for an instant that says if it's not your turn you may exile a black card from your hand rather than pay it's this spell's mana cost destroy all creatures that enter the battlefield this turn you want to get rid of like you know uh flicker combos and everything this is the card for you you want to get rid of uh massive token generation on your opponent's turn this is that card this does everything after that, we have Imp's Mischief. This isn't another card we've talked about on the podcast or anywhere before. This is a very CEDH card, um, as this deck is about two steps away from CEDH. It's borderline CEDH. Uh, it was brewed with a, a, a member of the Discord who plays CEDH primarily, um, who helped build this, and I kind of had a little bit of input on this deck as well. Um, but it is one and a black for an instant that says, Ch change the target of target spell with a single target. You lose life equal to that spell's mana cost. This can hit counter spells to counter themselves. Yes. <laughs> we have Plum the Forbidden. This is one and a black for an instant that says, as an additional cost to cast a spell, you may sacrifice one or more creatures. When you do, copy this spell for each creature sacrificed this way. You draw a card and you lose one life. You're going to be having a lot of rats. Turn those rats into Aristocrats piece by draining your opponents and also drawing cards and fueling more gas. We have Vampiric Tutor. One black instant, search your library for a card, put it on top of your top of your library, shuffle, oh sorry, shuffle, then put it on top and lose two life. After that, last card here, we have Village Rights. Again, one black instant. As an additional as an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a creature, draw, draw two cards. This is uh, again turning rats into card draw. After that, we're not going to go through the land base, even though there are typical ways of getting huge amounts of black mana uh, in this deck with uh, Phyrexian Tower helps, Nyctoros Shrine and Nyx, 
uh, Erborg and Cabal Coffers does it. Um, but again, that's all kind of subjective. Uh, we also have Urza Saga, as you can see on screen. Uh, we're going to go through the sorceries here. We have Demonic Tutor. It is one and a black. Again, search your library for a card, put it in hand, shop for your library. We have Diabolic Intent. This is one and a black for a sorcery. As an, as an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a creature. When you do that, you cast it, and when it resolves, it uh, searches your library for a card and put that card into your hand, then shuffle your library. We have Echoing Return. This is one black sorcery that says return target creature card with all and all other cards with the same name as that card from your graveyard to your hand. Put all those rats in the bin, pull them back out, pull them back out again, cast them onto the battlefield either swing out, do whatever you want with them, but you're going to get them back into your hand. We have Feed the Swarm, which is one and a black sorcery. Destroy target creature or enchantment and opponent controls. You lose life equal to that permanent that permanent's mana value. We have Grim Tutor. This is one and two black for a sorcery. Basically, search your library for a card, put it into your hand. You lose three life. You're set to shuffle. We have Gruesome Fate. This is two and a black for a sorcery. Each opponent loses one life for each creature you control. Just make 40 rats cast this spell, you you win the game. Unless they can counter this, which they probably will, have Imp's Mischief as a backup, go ham. Uh, do all the damage. Uh, we have Knight's Whisper, one and a black sorcery, draw two cards, lose two cards. We have Read the Bones, uh, two and a black sorcery, scry two, draw two, lose two. Sign in blood, two black. That doesn't have any text, James. Uh, let's go to the Commander Anthology Volume 2 version of it so I can read you the card. Uh, it is two black sorcery. Uh, target player draws two, loses two. I've killed people with this card before. It's a lot of fun to do that. Uh, we have Torment of Hailfire. This is another big finisher. X black black sorcery. Repeat the following process X times. Each opponent loses three life unless that player sacrifices a non-land permanent or discards a card. And lastly here, we have Toxic Deluge. This is two and a black for a sorcery. That says, and as, as an additional cost to cast this spell, pay X life. All creatures get minus X, minus X till end of turn. Obviously, X is equal to the amount of life you have spent. So just, you know, wipe the board. Doesn't matter if you get rid of your rats, you'll get them back. Who cares? Uh, after that, we're going to get into the artifacts here. We have 19 artifacts in this deck, and haha. -ha. As you can see, we're going to start off here with Aetherflux Reservoir. Four mana artifact. Whenever you cast a spell, you gain one life for each spell you've cast this turn. Pay 50 life. Aetherflux Reservoir deals 50 damage to target creature or player. Again, this is going to be a combo piece win in the deck. Uh, I'll explain all those at the end. Uh, Ultra Dementia. Two, uh, two mana artifact. Sack a creature. Uh, target player mills, uh, mills cards equal to the sacrificed creature's power i think is that would be the new wording on this card uh but as it states uh target player puts the top cards equal to uh sacrifice creatures power from the top of their library into their graveyards after that we have altar of the brood this is a one mana artifact whenever another permanent enters battlefield under your control each opponent puts the top card of his or her library into his or her graveyard again you may be going to be making a lot of rats just mill your opponents it 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 works I can signet two mana rock taps for one color. In this case, it's black. Uh, we have Ashnod's Altar, three mana artifact, sacrifice a creature, add two colors to your mana pool. Bolus's Citadel. This is three and three black for a legendary artifact. Look at the top card of your library at any time. You may play the top card of your library. If you cast a spell this way, you pay life equal to its converted mana cost rather than pay its mana cost. You can then uh, tap this, sack 10 non-land permanents. Each opponent loses 10 life. You can just sack 10 rats that you've created. Off you go. You're in the races. Chrome Mox, zero drop artifact with imprint. When Chrome Mox ETBs, you may exile a non-artifact, non non-land card from your hand, and then it taps for one color of the exile card's color. So in this case, it's going to be black. We have Jewel Lotus. Zero drop, tap for three black, cast your commander. As simple as that. Lightning Greaves. Two mana artifact equipment. Uh, equipped creature has Shroud and Haste, and also it is a zero drop. This is going to be giving Marinar as much protection as you need it to. Uh, it's going to have Haste and Shroud. And never going to have your rats not have fear. After that, we have Mana Crypt. This is a zero drop artifact at the beginning of your upkeep. If you flip a coin, if you lose the flip, it deals three damage to you and taps for two colorless. Fantastic card. Everyone knows it. Everyone loves it. Mana Vault. One drop artifact. Doesn't untap during your untap step. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may pay four mana. If you do, you untap Mana Vault. At the beginning of your draw step, if Mana Vault is tapped, it deals one damage to you and taps for three mana. This is just a ritual 
Uh, essentially, that's the way that I look at it. We have Mox Diamond. This is a card we're probably never going to talk about on the podcast ever again because it is a 100% CEDH card. Uh, this is just premier staple fast mana. Uh, zero drop artifact. When Mox Diamond ETBs, choose and discard a land card or sacrifice Mox Diamond, and then it taps to add one color or color to mana pool. So it just taps to add one color. Doesn't even choose what color it is. Oh, sorry. It doesn't even specify what color it is. It just adds one color. So in this case, it's going to tap to add black. We have Mox Opal. Zero drop legendary artifact with Metalcraft. Uh, tap to add one mana of any color. Activate this ability only if you control three or more artifacts. And that's fine. You're going to be controlling as many artifacts as possible. We have Sensei's Divining Top. This is one black artifact. Sorry, it's a one drop artifact. Not, not a black artifact. Uh, has two activated abilities. You can one... Uh, ta oh, sorry, you can pay one to look at the top three cards of your library, then put them back in any order. And you can tap it to draw a card and then put Sensei's Divining Top on top of the owner's library. We have Skull Clamp. This is a one drop artifact equipment. This is equipped creature gets plus one, minus one. When an equipped creature is put into a graveyard, draw two cards and it has equipped one. We have Soul Ring. Of course we've got Soul Ring. Why wouldn't we have Soul Ring? Thornbite Staff. This is a two mana tribal artifact shaman equipment. This says, uh, equipped creature has a new activated ability of two and tap. This creature deals one damage to target creature or player. And also whenever a creature is put into a graveyard from play, untap this creature. And also says whenever a shaman ETBs, you may attach Thornbite staff to it and it equips for four mana. After that, we have Thrumming Stone. This is uh, from Cold Snap, I believe. Yes, it was from Cold Snap originally. Uh, it is a five mana legendary artifact that says spells you control have ripple four. And what that means is whenever you cast a spell, you may reveal the top four cards of your library. You may play any revealed cards with the same name as the spell without paying their mana cost to put the rest on the bottom of your library. So you cast a Relentless Rats. You then look at the top four. If you have any Relentless Rats in there, you get to cast those. They also have ripple four. You're basically going to rip rippling four through your whole library if you know, it all lines up properly. Otherwise you can whiff. There is a chance that you will not get every single rat out, but you're going to get a, again, metric butt ton of rats. If you get 13 rats off this, then with Crashing Drawbridge and Marinara in the field, that's just a buttload of damage. will possibly win you the game. Uh, and lastly here, we have Wishclaw Talisman. This is one in a black artifact. It ETBs with three wish counters on it. Has an activated ability of one and tap. Remove a wish counter from Wishclaw Talisman. Uh, search the library for a card, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library and opponent gains control of Wish Call Talisman. Do activate this only during your turn. Now, there are a couple combos in this deck which you've probably already seen and put together yourselves, but for anyone who hasn't kind of put them together th themselves, you have Aetherflux Reservoir, Bolas Citadel, and Sensei's Divining Top. That is an infinite combo to draw your library and also cast top from the top of your library to get enough life to shoot everybody in the face. You also have Mariner with Thornbite Staff. As it says, uh, has the activated ability of two and tap it to deal one damage to target player, essentially, in this. Uh, you also need uh, Ashnod's Altar to sacrifice a rat. So at this point, you're sacking rats, you, you're uh, untapping and tapping of Mariner. Uh, doesn't matter if this deals the damage because eventually you're just going to be tapping Mariner to put more rats on the field. And then after you have infinite amount of rats, you're then going to be uh, tapping... Is it infinite amount of rats? I believe it's infinite amount of rats. Uh, I, again, haven't done the combo before, but yeah, Thornbite Staff, Mariner, and Ashnod's Altar is an infinite combo in the deck, uh, as well as then just pushing everybody down with damage and everything else. So this is a very fast mono black combo deck. I like this deck. I have played against this deck many times. I've played my true lane deck against this. I've also played a couple of other my decks around this. Uh, and possibly if we can swing it, we may even see this deck come up on our streams, on our Wednesday night streams, um, starting February 2nd, 2022. Uh, we're going to be streaming over on Twitch, so go follow us over there at uh, twitch.tv slash commander at arms. Our very first uh, guest is going to be Corey from the Commander Crew and Jason from the Commander Hub. So go and check us out there. Uh, also, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell, and leave a comment on this video. Uh, if you want to support this channel directly, you can do it through patreon.com slash commander at arms. You want to pick up any of these cards, this deck, anything else you see on here, any sealed products, uh, do it through our TCG affiliate link, tcgplayer.com uh, slash commander at arms. All links will be in the show notes below. And uh, yeah, that's it. 
So with that, I'm James, and this has been a new Commander at Arms Deck Tech. Peace. See ya. Thank you.